The 20 kill badge is considered one of the hardest badges in Apex, being considered as one of the hallmarks of one skill. There are players who surpass the 20 bombs skill requirements, but still struggle to pull these off. So how do you get one? As someone who has many 20 bombs, don't feel discouraged when I tell you the truth about 20 bombs. They're 50% luck, 20% raw skill, and 30% strategy. Obviously, it's a balancing act as you can't get lucky and you don't need as much skill to get the 20 bomb, or you have the worst luck imaginable but you still end up making it thanks to your raw skills or a very strong strategy saving the day. The most effective high kill game strategies involve dropping hot and the riskier the drop, the greater the reward, meaning that you're tossing a coin on the loot, on your teammate skill level, on your enemy skill levels and everything else that happens on drop. The first fight is very volatile, but it's the best place to pick up a few kills and set the momentum at the start of the game. The luck continues throughout the game, starting from how the teams are going to rotate, how they're going to position themselves, down to how they respond to what you're doing. There's no way of knowing what the others will do, but you can grab these unknown factors by the horns by using your raw skill, such as aim, movement, and positioning, and planning for them to set the strategy. Obviously, this doesn't include bot lobbying, which is intentionally getting into easier lobbies just to get the high kill game, because honestly, what's the point of having a 20 kill badge if you just cheated for it? Putting yourself in a bot lobby or queuing up with friends who back you up and feed you kills will offset how much luck, even the skill and strategy you need to pull off a 20 bomb, since there are way less stars to align, and I guess at the end of the day, it comes down to how badly you want it, but I really don't recommend taking a shortcut here. Either way, what about the skill? What about the 20% skill? What can we do there? Well, as I mentioned, the skill portion is made up by a combination of all of your skills, which will aid you in improvising and adjusting to the situations at hand, which is pretty important as playing for high kill games generally is pretty chaotic. And if you want to improve on this, you can improve your skills with isolated practice or just continuing to drop hot and running into fights and brute force your skill that way. But let's shift our focus and talk about the largest portion that you can control when getting a 20 bomb the strategy there's a few game plans and a lot of small tricks to help you get that high kill game and if you stick to that plan you eventually will get the 20 bomb if nothing else through sheer determination before you even go into the game let's establish a few things first first off your loadout you're going to be fighting a lot so look for low time to kill weapons such as an assault rifle or an smg and almost always couple that with a shotgun shotguns give you a huge burst on enemies if you can close the gap and will help you clutch up if needed if you're going for 1v freeze ideally these shotguns would be the mass the Peacekeeper, or the EVA 8 in that order. But as you're going to be dropping hot, that means that you will have to be versatile. Obviously, pick weapons that you're good with, but seeing as most players won't have good loot either way, just pick up the first few guns you find and try to make the most out of them. You'll learn what works pretty fast. But I'm getting ahead of myself. If you aren't going for 20 bombs on specific legends, I'd suggest movement legends or legends with smaller hitboxes, such as Wraith, Horizon, Lifeline, or Octane, as the small hitbox makes them favorable in jewels, and the movement abilities will allow you to either take more angles in team fights, or at the very least, rotate around faster. Also, a quick tip, it's much easier to drop a 20 bomb in duos rather than trios because, while yes, there's fewer enemies per squad, meaning you will have to fight more squads, the lower amount of enemies means that you'll be able to wipe them that much more easily. Playing trios isn't as good for high kill games, but it's very good for high damage games if you want to get, for example, 4000 damage. Once you're in the dropship, make sure to note where people are dropping. Even though there are hot zones and places that teams normally drop in, where people actually do drop is completely arbitrary. Make a note of where everyone in the server drops as well, so you know how you'll want to rotate after the early game. When it comes to deciding where you want to drop, you can either drop a little safer with your own loot where nobody else in the point of interest drops, or slightly outside of the POI, but this will cost you a lot of potential kills, so you should try to drop as hot as your own skill allows, because pushing the maximum potential of your skill is where the 20 bomb really comes from. If you have the ability to get several kills using unfavorable weapons, you you should drop right on top of other people so that you can kill them yourself. If you need a little bit more loot, you'll have to play a little bit safer, but try to take the risks more often than not. If you aren't good enough to win these duels, putting yourself in those situations will make you good enough to pick up kills on drop to get to the level required to get the 20 bomb. And this next point goes for every fight in a 20 bomb game, or just any fight in general. Try not to bite off more than you can chew. Try to isolate all your fights into 1v1s and work it through the lobby that way instead of wide peeking and fighting the entire team simultaneously. Doing this 
teammates will dramatically increase your chances of getting a high kill game. When you are in team fights, you'll want to make sure that you don't take enough damage to distract the enemies and allowing your teammates to swoop up the kills or yourself getting knocked. For the best results, you'll want to lead a charge and go in first, deal a lot of damage and then back off when you're cracked or taking too much damage while letting your teammates push forward. This allows you to reset ever so slightly and come back in to clean up those kills. If your teammates can't be relied on or you're just solo and you're up against a coordinated full team, it is in your best interest not to be the initiator and instead just holding the enemies, forcing them to make the first move and punish the first mistake that they do. This can be the enemies overextending, pushing too hard or not paying full attention, which might be enough for you to get a lot of surprise damage in, which can turn the tides of the fight completely. Keep in mind that holding a team might result in a standoff, and this is where macro knowledge comes in handy. If you find yourself in a standoff with another team, try to remember where the rest of the teams on the map should be, as well as where the zone will pull. If the enemy team has to move first not to get caught out by the zone or an enemy team, you can simply wait for that pressure to build up before they run into you and become easy kills. If you are the one in a bad position, it's probably not a good idea to hold the enemy team, as it probably won't push, and if so, you can either try to bait them in with damage on you or a teammate, force a fight yourself, or simply disengage. Once you've killed all of the squads in early game, you probably have up to 5 kills, or if you were lucky, even let's say 10. Depending on how long the early fight took, there will probably be a lot of stragglers rotating towards your position. You should probably just hang back and loot up the point of interest as much as possible before they show up. If you want to ensure that other teams rotate your way, bait them into thinking there's still a fight by shooting your teammates or the ground. You can also throw grenades, which are louder, and sell the bait even better. If you feel like nobody else will be coming, it's time to rotate. Think back how other squads dropped out of the ship and take into account how the zone is pulling. Now, players in pubs rarely rotate early, so in most cases you're going to want to position yourself between where they dropped and the edge of the next ring, with emphasis on areas that have a lot of teams rotate through them. For example, most chokes. If your goal is to simply get a 20 bomb, consider leaving the game and starting over once that you see that the 20 bomb is extremely unlikely or flat out mathematically impossible. For example, if you have only a handful of kills, say 5 to 10, and there's only 20 to 30 players left alive in the lobby, it's very unlikely that you'll end up killing enough to get that 20 bomb. It's not impossible, mind you, but very unlikely, and it depends on everyone else in the lobby not fighting each other before getting to you. That being said, if you get up to, let's say, 15 kills, and there's only a few squads left in the game, but the ring hasn't closed fully yet, you might want to give respawn farming a shot. In order to do this, you'll need to take a team fight, kill two of them and finish them, and then run away to let the last person escape with the banners so they're able to respawn them. Keep in mind though, this strat is a little bit risky, as there's a small chance that a third party rolls up and kills the last person standing, which denies you one kill that you could have had. So this should only be attempted when there's a handful of squads left and you are sure that nobody will be able to roll up and stop the plan. Obviously, there's no point in respawn farming if there's no beacons to use. All in all, these tips should be a great way for you to farm more high kill games and get your own 20 bombs. If you are still struggling, you'll want to identify the weakest link in your gameplay and improve on it. Now that weak link can be your aim, your movement, decision making, or anything in between. And if you want to look into upping your aim skills or overall game knowledge, I suggest that you check out the video on the screen to get started. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.